scriptural response to sexual immorality, the shedding of innocent blood and lying. We will see the response to these things is the same. The problem of Christianity, is Christians. Really the problem is that those claiming to be Christian are not Christian. At a high level, Christians are considered to be either Catholic or Protestant. The doctrines of these groups negate them being Christian. The short version of this is both groups have changed the message from God and consequently have never obeyed the gospel. Nonetheless, these people go through their lives believing they are Christians. They use the Bible to support the things they teach. You can find dozens of things taught on any given issue. God has defined the required character of those in the body of Christ. Let's look at Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The work of those in the body of Christ, typically in a local church is to bring the gospel message to the world. In view of Galatians 5, how can God's requirement be fulfilled? Well of course, it is by preaching the word while exhibiting the characteristics just mentioned in Galatians. Do you think there was any gentleness in the Inquisition or the hundreds of other cruelties? Do you think there is any gentleness in today's treatment of sinners, especially in relation to certain sins? Indeed, preaching the word can be devastating for those hearing the word of God. Nonetheless, it is needed and does not have to be hurtful, but very much the opposite. Those bringing the message will do no harm but move on as requested, albeit with sadness. The so-called Christians not having the basics try to help others to become Christian. Of course, since they do not have a relationship with God and do not bring the gospel message they cannot help, only mislead. Let me give an example of dealing with the God-defined sins related to sexual immorality. We could select any sin and the process would be similar. These sins involving sexual immorality have drama and evoke emotions, seriousness, which is good because nothing is more serious than your soul. First, we are talking about those in the body of Christ and the directive is to preach the word. What else does God require in terms of this work with the lost? Their job is not to judge people or to in some way provide any penalty, any dread. Those in the body of Christ are the only ones who can help people succeed. They are not in the condemning business but the saving business. They bring the message while being consistent with Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23 and all other scriptural requirements for the character of one in the body of Christ. In a kind, caring spirit they bring the message people need. They absolutely do not campaign against the sin, but bring the saving message to the sinner. They have authority to do nothing else. Dealing with Sinners How do those in the body of Christ deal with sinners? The reconciliation is all about covering God-defined sin. The suffering of the Son of God is all about providing humankind the opportunity to share in the divine nature. How does God look at the one who lies, who murders, who is sexually immoral, as one who has or supports the taking of innocent lives, who is selfish, who is greedy, who is proud, really how does God look at anyone who supports sin, any sin? The thing you need to understand is that you must not die in sin. God wants the sinner to succeed. 1 Timothy 2 verses 3 and 4 For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Indeed, your life is a test pitting you against sin. Your final disposition is the result of your choices. The best choice is to respond to the gospel message, obey the gospel and live faithfully. There is nothing more serious in life than the soul, and thus bringing the message is a weighty responsibility. The one bringing the message understands the consequences of a person failing in life. The so-called world of Christianity brings the wrong message, a different gospel, and in a way that is doomed to fail. Their approach may seem reasonable, but the very reason they are not Christians is because they do not respect the Word of God. It goes back to not understanding the Church. Essentially everything wrong with these so-called Christian religions is related to missing the most fundamental things. 
If they got the church right they would not fail in life and consequently they would bring a message that would be helpful, one where sins would be forgiven. The church belonging to Jesus is spiritual and exists to provide a way for each person to overcome their spiritual problem of sin. The so-called Christian churches of the world fail in the following ways. 1. They do not bring the truth, the gospel message. 2. They have developed organizations to do the work of evangelism, whereas everyone in the body of Christ has this responsibility. 3. They do not have a way to add the converted to the body of Christ, certainly not a scriptural way. 4. They believe they have some responsibility to campaign against sin instead of the one and only authorized duty of preaching the word. 5. They expand the reach of churches to include many churches working together. In effect that makes no one truly responsible while creating a non-authorized group and undoubtedly the opportunity for doctrines not aligned with the doctrine of Christ. 6. They select certain sins and campaign against them in order to eliminate them from the world. Although this might seem to be a noble effort it is not the goal of those in the body of Christ and thus will hinder the work they need to accomplish. One should not think they can please God by doing what they think is the right thing to do, but by doing as God directs. We are dealing with God who points out that, for the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God means what He says and says what He means. Clearly your choices are aligned with God's way or they are not, and along these lines your eternity will be settled. Christianity has been terribly wrong for so long that clarity is needed. Who can believe the state of this religion, of Christianity, so far from the truth? Christianity meaning the body of Christ provides the only opportunity for humankind to succeed. It is not the perverted Christianity that the world knows today. The non-Christian religions of the world see all sorts of evil in Christianity in the current world, but especially in its history. The Christianity that is of God's Son would never lead anyone to such a conclusion. How in the world can people come to believe in anything different than the long-established human version of Christianity? Well, God has the answer by providing the necessity of a person to have a love of the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10 And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. God continually points to the truth to make a person free from sin. He consistently emphasizes that His message, which is the truth must not be changed. It is amazing how many are influenced by the number of people who believe something. Certainly, a billion believers must be right. All these people cannot be wrong and if they were, surely God will not reject so many. All sorts of human reasoning is used to justify beliefs. Certainly, a person cannot be held accountable if they were effectively indoctrinated perhaps by some charismatic person who was hard to resist. All sorts of excuses, all sorts of blame is used to protect those who have accepted error, it is not their fault. All my books and videos emphasize understanding God as the only way to understand life. As you grow in the knowledge of God you will understand His seriousness, and understand He means what He says. In fact you will understand God cannot lie, he even points this out in Titus 1 verse 2. In hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Thus God could not accept anything that was not true regardless of how many people believed it. He could in his perfection never be arbitrary in his judgments. God's love which is often believed to be a cover for humankind's bad choices could never excuse any sin. The love of God is fully consumed in providing by Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection the opportunity for each person to succeed. A person can choose to accept God's love in obedience to the gospel. How does those in the body of Christ deal with sinners? The one bringing the message to the sinner has the same message for every person regardless of the sin. They deliver the gospel message and the sinner needs to respond in obedience. It does not matter the sin or sins involved. There are just a few elements involved in our existence. We are eternal beings living in a test with the criteria for succeeding being determined by our sin condition, 
that is relative to God-defined sin. That is all there is. The religions of the world would have you believe there is much, much more. Indeed, there are a few things you need to understand. There is an emphasis on seeking God, finding Him and obeying Him. God provides a way to cover your sins and how to live to please Him. You are an eternal being in a test and it would be right to say that life is about the soul and not about the hundreds of things that surround you every day. God's desire is for you to succeed and you should know that the choices you make will determine your fate. It is on that basis that God differentiates, and thus there is nothing arbitrary. In this scenario it can be said that you are the one deciding your fate. An important understanding is that if you die in any sin you will fail. The sinner seeking God and truth is learning of sin seriousness and of course, the one bringing the message realizes the gravity of dying in sin and thus the necessity to have sins covered. Many people are very casual about death, and they can get this attitude from religion. Are those of religion aggressively helping people be aware of death's seriousness? Your final destination will be the result of your choices and the judgment is based on the things done in the body. There will be no changing your outcome. In an instant at death your eternity will be known, is anyone telling you the truth you need? Today, the sinner hears the same solution as given on the first day of the kingdom in Acts 2 and by responding in the same way they will likewise have their sins forgiven. This was the pattern throughout the New Testament. Strangely, it is not the pattern of the so-called Christians of the world. God differentiates some sins. Although dying in any sin will result in a failed life, God indicates a particular danger associated with some sins. God highlights certain sins and this can be seen in the six things God hates, yes, seven are an abomination. God also refers to some sins as shameful and refers to God's rightful judgment for various vile passions. Romans 1 verses 24-32 provides a long list of sins and indicates the seriousness for those who approve of such things. So why does God point to certain sins with such fervor, such disgust, really such anger? Well, in consideration of God's character we can better understand His reasons for calling out certain sins. His character is one of perfection, one that wants all to succeed and that is seen throughout the scriptures. God does not hold back the seriousness of failing. Fear is in the warnings from God and the description of punishment is frightening. Even in pointing out these abominable sins, God does not want any person to fail. God knows that some sins drag a person down such that recovery is unlikely and consequently God loses that soul. Another characteristic of these abominable sins is that they often go directly against God's plan. They oppose the most important aspects of God's creation. God in His creation puts in place the means for multiplying humankind. One man, one woman and that should not be changed. Throughout the scriptures, variation from God's way is condemned. An associated disturbance occurs as some decide to end their pregnancies. Clearly, this violates God's plan for populating humankind. This action also falls into the category of things God hates, namely the shedding of innocent blood. Note, God differentiates sins by referring to them as abominable, as hated things, but why? Because recovery from these sins can be nearly impossible. Perhaps the thing that God hates the most is lying. Four of the seven things mentioned in relation to being hated by God involve lying, see Proverbs 6 verses 16 to 19. As the Bible is ending, God indicates in Revelation 21 verse 8, All liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Certainly, lying is a sin that digs a deep hole that few can escape. Whenever the word of God is changed, people will be misled. God's purpose is to share His divine nature. God's plan to realize His purpose is damaged by lies in relation to what God requires. Any sin can drag a person down, but these are mentioned because God knows of their universally destructive nature. How does a child of God respond to those involved in or supporting sexual immorality, ending the life in the womb, and lying? Regardless of the sin the response is the same. 
They need the gospel message, the truth from God that can allow them to succeed. Although there is nothing more important in life it will be difficult for many deeply entrenched in sin to obey the gospel. The repentance part of obeying the gospel requires a person to permanently leave sin. Those sins referred to as abominable, as hated, as disgusting are so tagged hoping it might wake up, even terrify those so involved. One might realize that such repugnant things must not be a part of their life, however some will just become bitter. People's reaction to abortion is very binary, very emotional and usually totally unstudied. This author has five videos on abortion to help people make a more knowledgeable decision. The playlist is called, Abortion. Search Alan Gill 9481 and then click Playlist and select Abortion, the five videos will appear. Some sins are destructive in a way that a person can be overcome such that the last thing on their mind is God and what happens when they die. Undoubtedly, those living in such sins will not care to hear the message from God. Those in the body of Christ bring the gospel message and that is their designated responsibility in relation to sinners. They will move on as those being taught request they leave. The fields are white as the scriptures indicate and that means. The fields are ripe and ready to be harvested. Also, the workers are few in comparison to the fields needing to be harvested. There are all kinds of God-defined sins and those in the body of Christ neither have the time or authority to do more than preach the word. It will always be the sinner that interests the one bringing the gospel message and not their sin. As I have mentioned before those, in Christ, are in the saving business, the business of directing people in how their sins can be covered and not in the condemning business. Unfortunately, the so-called Christians act in both modes, saving and condemning. They act in the saving mode, but do not bring the message that can save. These neither bring the truth people need and often harbor personal resentment about certain sins. They do this because they see how God despises certain sins and think that is also their job. It is not. Indeed, you agree with God and see how God sees certain sins and you bring that to your work in preaching similar to how Paul indicated, knowing the terror of the Lord we persuade men. God has declared his hatred for certain sins and now those, in Christ, know, they know the seriousness. This motivates those in the body of Christ as it did Paul. Thus, they preach the word while exhibiting the personal loving characteristics demanded by God. These six books will bring clarity to this confusing world of religion. You will find answers to your questions and evidence for the things presented in the videos.